So now in this next flowchart and video, we'll continue our look at the skeletal muscle by entitling the next flowchart, Skeletal Muscle 2. And so the first thing I want to get out of the way and make clear is the following. In skeletal muscle, what we noticed are two very important proteins, actin and myosin, both of which are contractile proteins. But also, I would like to mention that actin and myosin Though you always hear them associated with muscle cells and muscle contraction, they're actually found in many cells. They are not specific to muscle cells or skeletal muscle. They're found in many cells. But what makes them interesting to us, or at least what makes them special in terms of what we're talking about in this lecture, is the following. The caveat here is that they are going to only be highly organized. That's the key here. They're only highly, incredibly, and wonderfully organized, as we'll see in just a second, in muscle cells. They may be present in other cells, but they're not going to be present in the following way, um, in the following representation of this flowchart, as we'll get to. They're very much highly organized exclusively in muscle cells within myofibrils, as we'll see in just a sec. So overall, what you want to understand about muscle cells, therefore, is the following. Well, when we see in muscle cell, what we see in muscle cells is what is termed a filament arrangement. That's what's specific to the muscle cells. No other cells, if they have actin and myosin, they'll never have this filament arrangement. So this is what's present in muscle cells. This is what we would term the highly organized structure of actin and myosin in muscle cells. And therefore, this is what gives muscle cells their classic appearance. So the filament arrangement in muscle cells gives a, uh, the ideal word here would be striped appearance. They looked very much like they're striped underneath a microscope. But this is commonly just referred to instead as striated. That's the technical term that we use here. So we state that skeletal muscle, because it has a striped appearance, because the filaments are arranged in a very highly organized manner in muscle cells, skeletal muscle is therefore going to be termed as muscle cells that are striated. That's the term you should understand and remember. Striated simply means striped. Striped because the filaments are arranged that way. They are arranged that way because they are highly organized as actin and myosin filaments. Now, let's look at this organization now. Now that we've gotten this, uh, now that we understand what makes muscle cells special. So let's look at this specific arrangement by understanding another sub-sub-substructure within skeletal muscles that's worth uh, looking at, and that would be the sarcomere. So this is the next structure within skeletal muscle, and sarcomere is specifically going to simply be the basic unit of contraction. And just to sort of ground where we are in the skeletal muscle, this basic unit of contraction is going to be found within the myofibril. So you know how we said that the myofibril has actin and myosin within it? it it's going to arrange the actin and myosin in what is known as a sarcomere arrangement. This is shown in the bottom of figure 50.26. The bottom of that figure shows the sarcomere in that specific arrangement of actin and myosin, giving you a striated appearance. So let's take a look at what a sarcomere is all about. Because it's the basic unit of contraction, it's what's going to allow the skeletal muscle to move and allow thus the skeleton, the bones that it's attached to, to move as you want it to. We're going to see that contraction is going to involve the following. The sarcomere, from a structural standpoint, is going to be uh, it's going to contain repeating units, okay? There will be a repeating unit of overlapping, and we'll see what this means in a little bit later, overlapping thin and thick filaments. So remember, when you think of thin filaments, this means actin, thick filaments means myosin. So myosin and actin, the thin and thick filaments, will be overlapping each other, and they're going to repeat this overlap over and over and over again to give you many sarcomeres within a myofibril. So we can state the following. There's going to be lots of sarcomeres, lots of basic units of contraction because you need a lot of them to do something as important as contraction, as big as contraction. So lots of sarcomeres are going to be lined 
up end to end. And that's going to be within and that's basically going to form a myofibril, okay? So when we have many sarcomeres, many sarcomeres lined up end to end in a longitudinal format, okay? You're going to then form from this a myofibril. And lots of myofibrils will give you, if you have lots of myofibrils, you eventually make up a skeletal muscle. So notice the hierarchy that we've developed. We had a skeletal muscle. Within the skeletal muscle, we have muscle fibers. Within muscle fibers, we have myofibrils. And within myofibrils, we have a basic unit of contraction known as a sarcomere. Many sarcomeres make up a myofibril. Many myofibrils make up a muscle fiber. And many muscle fibers make up a skeletal muscle. All shown very well and much better in 50.26. So take a look at that. Now, within a sarcomere, believe it or not, we have some more components to sort of highlight and understand even further. We know that within a sarcomere, there's going to be actin and myosin, but let's look at how they're arranged. We've stated that the actin and myosin, though found in many other cells, is arranged highly organized only in muscle cells, thus only in a sarcomere format. What does that mean? That means that in a sarcomere, you'll have the following two components you'll have what is known as a Z-line or Z-lines, um, sometimes referred to as Z-discs, and you will also have what is known as an M-line. This is all within one sarcomere, one unit of contraction. So what are the Z-lines? The Z-lines are just going to be the location, these are specific parts that you can see, location where thin actin filaments are attached. So remember, thin always means actin, and that's a contractile protein, and it's going to be found within the sarcomere on a Z-line, location where thin actin filaments are attached. So they don't just float around in the cell, in the muscle cell, they're attached to something. It's called a Z-line. In addition, Z-lines are going to denote a very important sort of uh, a boundary, because Z-lines are going to be what join adjacent, and adjacent means things that are near near to each other. They join adjacent sarcomeres, these units of contraction, they join adjacent sarcomeres together at, let me finish writing together, at their ends. What do I mean by this? Very simply speaking, we can do a very rough drawing here of z-lines. I have one z-line here, I have another z-line here, I'm going to draw some actin that comes out from the Z-line. I'm going to draw some more actin that comes out from the Z-line. And that's it. I've drawn my Z-lines. Now, where are the Z-lines specifically? This right here, this structure that I'm sort of bolding is a Z-line. And this structure right here that I'm bolding is a Z-line. This is a Z. This is a Z. What's coming off of them? These are both actin filaments. That's actin right there and it's over on the right hand side as well. So that's actin, so is that, so are those. So the thin filaments, notice how thin they are, are attached to the z-lines. This entire unit right here, from here to here, is what creates a sarcomere. It what bound, creates a boundary for the sarcomere unit. From z to z, z-line to z-line, gives you one sarcomere. Many of these together, if I drew more z-lines, more z-lines, each time I had two z-lines, that would denote one sarcomere. Now, what about the m-line? The m-line is very simply speaking, the location, I think it's very appropriately named, location of thick, what do you think is the thick? Thick is, of course, the myosin filament. This is where those are located, because they both are arranged in a very specific manner within a sarcomere. And specifically, the manner that the myosin is arranged in is this. It's anchored in the middle. So let's just redraw our Z-line right here, and then another Z-line right here. And we'll draw three actin filaments like we did before. Same thing here, three actin filaments. And then we're basically going to draw a thick myosin filament that's in the middle. So basically, if we think of the middle, this is like right here. We can draw a very thick myosin filament right in between the actin space. And then one more we'll draw right here. 
So these, of course, are not going to be floating around in the cell. They're going to be anchored. They're basically going to be anchored to this M line. That's the middle. The M line is right here. Myosin is attached, so we can state that this is myosin. This is, of course, a Z line. That's a Z line, and this is actin. What you, need, you should understand here is that we see some overlap. This is actin, and then right underneath it is myosin, and then right over that is an actin, then myosin, then actin. So we see this arrangement of actin, myosin, actin, myosin, actin, myosin, whatever. That's the overlap that I'm talking about. This will be critically important when we look at this, when we look at when contraction actually happens. Understand from a structural standpoint what we're focusing on. This will change this whole uh, shape and idea here is going to change, and so will the Z-line arrangement as we move forward and look at skeletal muscle contraction.